Okay, it's me again, um, Amazing Nick Dutch, professional online tarot reader and general weird eccentric, you know, spiritualistic occultic like person who loads of people will just really really hate because I've got different ideas to them, so I can accept that now. Now on my uh, YouTube feed there I've got this wonderful comment which says, happy your vids are back up, hope you don't mind the digression. But with all your experience with astral projection, how do you understand the, the phenomenons? Is it just vivid dreams or actual OBE? Well, that depends upon what particular experiences you've had and what the defining characteristics of it are. There are some very vivid dreams I've had which followed in accordance with what Sylvan Muldoon and Harewood Carrington suggested in the projection of the astral body were astral projection dreams, namely um, the movement of uh, my, myself in the dream uh, would have been the movements of the astral body, but I'm still um, asleep and dreaming. Okay, so the dream world is like superimposed upon the physical world perfectly on a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? The astral body is leaving the physical body and moving around in the same way as it is in the dream. Which is why when you have like a falling dream and then you wake up, you don't always scream when you have a falling dream. I've had loads of them, you know. That is because the astral body was like floating around up there and then here I said, oh, you're waking up, boom back into 100% coincidence with the physical body, okay? That's that's one type of experience, and that goes with all the other styles of dream that Silver Muldoon, uh, Silver Muldoon spoke about, including like the um, head flapping dreams, spinning dreams, and all that sort of stuff. It's all connected to your spirit leaving your body. I'm pretty much sure that's 100% true and accurate. But then there's other types in which you have a fully conscious experience outside of the physical when everything uh, appears to be illuminated by a light which comes from your body and it's a sort of like a combination between like yellow light and blue light being projected at the same time but not mixing to make green. It's kind of like a weird creamy color uh, and there are no shadows because it's you know it's like your body is either emanating light or is a organ of sense which is why you can sense things and you can either move around in a almost as if you would physically um, or you can like move around by thinking about stuff like um, going into the mood of fly or floating or flying or that sort of stuff. Uh, and those 100% fully conscious experiences, I've only had like a handful of them in my life. Okay, but I've had them. Um, but I've also used like uh, some aspects of like vivid dreams occasionally all right to share dreams with other people and share thoughts with other people that that is another way in which it seems to work thought is projected out of the out of your mind to other people and you have the same dream and they don't know you're doing it you meet them for coffee the next day say hey, you just had curiosity you know i'm interested in dreams what did you dream of last night and then they tell you and you're like what the fuck <laughs> that actually happened ha 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 it worked um, and that has happened to me, okay? You know, thought is not just contained in your body. You know, you're, you're this weird, fucked up, energetic thing which can, like, you know, extend ideas out to other people under some strange circumstances that we don't properly fully understand. And most people who are playing around with this stuff don't fully or properly understand it. You know, most of us have to confess that we are experimental with our, like, spiritualism and occultism and trying to understand about how the world works. We're not, like, people who can know is, I can just do that, ha <laughs> ha, because all the people who turn around say, well, I can just do it, I can just do it, yeah. They're usually, like, simpletons, okay? They can't think. They are arrogant and in a fantasy world and they want to carry on being in a fantasy world and they want to alpha up over you for um, fantastical reasons, you know, stupid reasons. They're like extreme inadequates. You've got problems of attitude and ego and personality and character and they just screwed up fuckers. Okay, just like seriously, seriously damaged people. There's so much of them out there and it's just like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Except the fact that there's too many things that we don't know. There's just a handful of experiences and a lot of folk myths, okay? You know, myths within our society that, that have become 
so heavily ingrained as a result of you know people deliberately hoaxing society and you know the, the, the whole slender man thing that went out there for a while and people started believing in the entity of slender man it was an invention on a hoax website for fuck's sake it was an invention and then you even you even get like you know kids attempting like ritual sacrifice of other people to try and appease the slender man and that, that apparently that actually happens okay you know there's there's stupid fucked up shit out there in the world because people like aren't thinking and have got issues and problems and like no no all right just like the quiet contemplative experience of like trying to do stuff and and having fun with it is is basically what it's all about and you know and I'm, I'm and yeah, well, I suppose there are a few people out there, like the, the amazing Barbara Ann Brennan, who wrote her books on spiritual healing. And I think that what she was writing about was true. Okay, in the fact that she, you know, used a wide variety of different methods, including diet and nutrition, and also the laying on of hands to bring about real physical changes in people. I believe that to be 100% true and accurate and factual. Okay, um, the more I've been finding out about homeopathy, all right, there is something there. Okay, what they say about it in terms of all the like succussion and the rest of that and then all the dilution to remove anything physical which could like, essentially slow down the effect of like reality changing components of spiritual energy or consciousness energy or the uh, you know the subtle whatever level of reality it is uh, there is truth to that okay often you get like you know homeopathic treatments and it doesn't work for you of course of course not you know it'd be like the wrong treatment for the wrong stage in your disease or your wellness or your healing or something and, you, and that's why people have to actually know stuff to be able to do it but you can still like work out through online research is what could actually help and you, and you do your homeopathy on top of your allopathic stuff and hey press you get better faster you know i've had real very serious physical experiences physical bodily experiences as a result of homeopathic stuff when I was like ultra skeptical about it, you know. So the energy consciousness like stuff has reality to it. The astral projection thing is essentially real. Okay, there is life after death as far as I'm concerned uh, for all of us, even if you're an atheist. Okay, or if, if you're like of a different spirituality, because like it, it's got to be common for everyone. You know, it's got to be common for everyone. It's not a question of, like, I believe this, therefore I'm going to go there. No, 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 we're all going to, like, you know, move on to someone, somewhere else or something else somehow. And we can't say how. We got a combination of the various holy books to go by. We got a combination of, like, the various experiences of, like, weird people like me. Um, fucking strange tarot reader type, like, character who, like, drinks too much tea. Uh, yeah, I mean, that... There's stuff in the world which is like real, you know, and, and it's and it's strange and we don't understand it, but we can experience some of it. And it takes like so much, I mean, like, you know, when I first started talking about this stuff a couple of years back, uh, the actual projection, it's like everyone out there um, who responded to that video uh, also said that it took them two years to gain a full-blown experience and it took me about two years as well and that was like obsessionally doing stuff every single fucking day it was hard work <laughs> and that's why I'm not gonna like uh, say oh I'm going to you know like something from the fucking you know was it the chilling the chronicles of Sabrina or whatever it was oh I'm just gonna go and do an astral projection and visit someone like right now yeah it's gonna be fine yeah no <laughs> Like, screw that. <laughs> it's going to take me a couple more years to get back into training and practice, and life might get in the way, and it'll be all difficult, and oh, fuck it, you know. I mean, Jesus. You know, but, like, once you've had it, once, once you've done it, okay, then you've got that experience in your personal history, in your memory. It was there. It was concrete. It was real. You know, and there's nothing that will take that away from you. All right? Now, you don't have to argue it with anyone. Because arguments themselves don't actually do anything, right? <laughs> you know, because there's stuff which is real out there. If there's people out there who don't believe it, they're going to carry on not believing it. And everyone thinks like what they believe is what's real. Rather than saying, I've got questions, I haven't got answers. I've got more and more questions, I haven't got answers. That, that, would, be, that, that would be the intelligent way of doing it. And we have to like, evolve people should be able to start thinking more like that. 
but you know we we're, we're not evolved all that much you know culturally intellectually morally spiritually socially whatever we're pathetic mm. so you know yeah there is uh, like some types of experiences out there from the astral projection side of things which is 100 percent clear-cut in my humble opinion no not uh, and by my humble experience 100 percent real your spirit leaves your body deal with that okay you don't want to deal with it fine you know you, you want to think something else or believe something else then fine you know but that happened okay that that objectively factually happened to me um you know, I, and I'm, you, you know, just like, it's difficult, okay? Because I, we're all, like, taught the, you know, homeopathy is a load of bullshit. But let's just say there was someone who lived to, like, a ripe old age, like, well, well, well into their ancient years, and was still working, like, pretty much full-time, and they're in a good state of health, okay? Um... And they had a position of real authority and power, all right? And let's say, oh, oh my God, they relied upon homeopathic medicine. I'm, of course, talking about the Queen. You know, royal family, UK, the Queen. So how comes, you know, this is a person who should, like, you know, has got all the secrets of the nation and they're uh, relying upon homeopathy, all right? But yet the rest of us are told, nah, it doesn't work, mate. You know, don't worry about it. You know, here's some chemicals that are gonna fuck up your liver, have that instead. And just saying, just just think about it. You know, this stuff is preserved for royalty and kept in place by an ideological culture, which which turns around to you and says, no, 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 it doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. But but the, but the queen's like in her like nineties or something crazy, and she's still working. <laughs> you know, eighties or nineties, I don't know. All right, and she's relying on homeopathy, and you know, we've probably got someone like doing that. You know, fucking getting out there dowsing pendulum and working out what is the right like remedy for this that and the other and it's like boom you know it's happening and then there's someone like me who's taken some homeopathy before and hey brilliant that worked okay that took something something else which like was maybe like the wrong preparation for me and i didn't get a result okay um because maybe that was like you know i hadn't understood how that particular remedy works well with like my body uh, at that time in my disease or in my state of personal healing uh, or whatever, you know, because there's there's things I, I haven't properly studied about homeopathy. Like, so just there's things I haven't properly studied about acupuncture, but nowadays there's um, some science about the connective tissue within the body, which, like, connects with the autonomic nervous, nervous system and overlaps, funnily enough, with the acupuncture points. All right? And can be affected by, like, the needles and the acupressure. And it connects to the autonomic nervous nervous system, so it's giving instructions to your body. Okay. Now I'm I'm not actually a conspiracy theorist. I don't think that there is some like, well, maybe to a certain extent I am, you know, but but in a different way, you know. I'm not like an like Illuminati conspiracy theorist. I'm just someone who thinks there's there's like strange ways in which like the royalty are given homeopathy and the rest of us are given drugs. All right, we're told that astral projection is just a you know a fantasy, a fiction. It's not real, but yeah, you know it can happen. You know, you you you, you buy Silver Muldoon's Her and Harry Carrington's The project Projection of the Astral Body. You study that thing intensely and become so fucking obsessed with it, like a lunatic, for a period of a couple of years. And hey, presto, what's going to happen for you? And there's people who say there's no life after death. It's a question of maybe how there's no life after. I mean, like, if it's not in any common experience, then, yeah, of course you're going to doubt it. Of course you're going to doubt it. And you have to rely upon someone else to tell you that, yeah, there's life after death if you do as I say and you pay this and you, you know, this, that, and the other. Whereas, hey, presto, you know, there's life after death, but it's just, like, common to everyone. You don't have to be of this religion or this culture. You don't, don't have to join the Wiccans, all right, to enjoy astral projection. You don't have to join, like, whatever. It's, it's there for everyone. 
everyone doesn't matter what you believe theologically that there's some things which are objectively true for the, like it's like religion is like um, simplifying everything to the point to a point okay but it, you know the, the more you look at it there's an expanding reality just opening up before your eyes and everything is connected and it's really really weird all the stuff about the like, pyramid of manifestation from like a singular one point down to all the various different layers and the energy fields and the auras and the stones and the radionic rates and the hertzian vibrations and all this stuff down to the physical it's real just you know accept the fact it's real and we're all somehow part of this like intense Wow, which is just like out there to just blow your damn mind the more you more you think about it, and like you got to like really shatter your previous preconceptions to like start to take more of this stuff in because it's just like so damn vast, it's so damn complicated, it's so damn like oh, you know, this is this is the reality. This is this is what this is the world we live in. We don't think we live in it. It's all bogged down by like bad food and bad air and and our own personal bad habits, of which I've still got a fair few myself. I've gone back to the vaping because I'm pathetic. Okay, you know, <laughs> I'm still, you know I've still got an addiction problem, okay? You know, and it's like, you know, getting, just be a part of it, get into it, learn it, you know. It's, it, 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 there's things for your health of your body, definitely. There's things for the health of the mind, definitely. There's things for the, the health of society, potentially, if like we could all like get our heads out of our asses and stop like, thinking like a bunch of primitive little pieces of shit and start developing a soul you know i mean like oh god big shit man big stuff